na mém, která předávám slovo Davidovi a máš už půl hodiny. Ok, so thanks. So I will switch to English, so I hope you don't mind. So my name is David and today I will tell you how to write better React with HTML. So the knowledge of React is presumed for my talk, but if you don't know React, don't worry because you will skip JavaScript React and learn Reason React because it's better as you will see in my talk. But first, just a couple of words about me. I work as a front-end developer in Blueberry where we build web and mobile applications using cutting-edge technologies. I have a Twitter so you can tweet at me at coding underscore lawyer. I also have a blog where I mostly write about React and ReasonML, codinglawyer.io. And if you are wondering why coding lawyer, it's because I was working as a lawyer, but then I got bored to learn to code, and I'm building applications. And I'm also organizing ReasonML meetups in Prague and contributing to the Free Code Camp community. So first question, who heard about ReasonML? Please raise your hand. Cool, some of you. <coughs> so most of you will learn something new today, and that's pretty cool, I guess. But first, let's start talking about React. So React is one of the most popular ways to build user interfaces in JavaScript. So React is pretty cool, right? But could we make it even cooler, <coughs> better? So who wants to write better React? Of course you do. <laughs> but to write better React, we need to understand its problems. So what's the main problem of React as a JavaScript library? Well, React isn't a native JavaScript library. Because if you take a closer look at it, you will see that some of its principles are foreign to JavaScript. Let's visualize that. And let's get started with immutability. In React, we want to keep our stuff immutable. We don't want to mutate our state. We don't want to mutate our props. Because if we did, we will get some unpredictable consequences. <coughs> However, in JavaScript, we don't have immutability out of the box. If you want to keep your stuff immutable, you need to do it by a convention. Or you need to use external libraries such as immutable.js. Functional programming. React is based on functional programming. I mean, React applications are a composition of functions. On the other hand, although JavaScript has some functional programming features, it's not functional programming language per se. Because if you really want to write some nice declarative JavaScript code, again, you need to use external libraries, such as Ramda or Lodash-FP. Type system. In React, we have a prop types. And prop types, it's a way how to simulate static types in JavaScript. Because JavaScript isn't statically typed language. So again, if you want to write some nice advanced types in JavaScript, you need to use external libraries such as Flow or TypeScript. So if you take a look at our table, you can see that JavaScript isn't compatible with React's core principles. So the question is, is there some other language that might be more compatible with React than JavaScript? Fortunately, we have ReasonML immutability. In reason, we have immutability out of the box. Functional programming. Reason is based on OCaml, a functional programming language. Type system. In reason, we have strong type system. So if you take a look at our table again, you can see that reason is more compatible with React than JavaScript. So let's talk about reason reason is it's not a new programming language it's just alternative <coughs> syntax it's for OCaml it's an alternative JavaScript like syntax for OCaml so basically what reason enables you you can write OCaml using JavaScript like syntax so OCaml serves as a backing language for reason and this is really powerful because you can use all those cool OCaml features you have a pattern matching you have functional programming features, you have immutability out of the box, and much more. And compared to OCaml, it is easier for you to integrate Reason into your existing JavaScript code. 
Let's take a look at example. This is FISBUS algorithm. It's written in Reason. And although we are using pattern matching, which we don't have in JavaScript, the syntax is pretty similar. But of course, the only usable language for browser is JavaScript. So we need to compile this code to JavaScript first to be able to use it. And we can do that thanks to BuckleScript compiler. And BuckleScript will take your Reason code and compile it to readable and performant JavaScript with a great depth called elimination. And because BuckleScript is based on OCaml's compiler, you will get basically blazingly fast compilation. It's much faster than Babel and several times faster than TypeScript, for example. So <clears throat> let's take our FISBUS algorithm and compile it to JavaScript. <coughs> now, if you take a look at the resulting JavaScript code, I mean, it's pretty readable. I mean, it looks like it was written by a JavaScript developer. And this is pretty cool because <laughs> if you take other language that are, that are compiled to JavaScript, the resulting code is not that readable. It's very difficult to read. So this is advantage of reason. You get this nicely readable code. And BuckleScript also provides us with a JavaScript interop. This simply means you can take your working JavaScript code and use it in your Reason application. And you can use Reason to interact with this code. And moreover, you can take your Reason code and use it in your existing JavaScript code base. Moreover, in Reason, you can, see you, you can use all the JavaScript and PM packages and you can use them in your Reason application. So that's also pretty powerful. But uh, this talk is about React. And we can use React in Reason thanks to Reason React library. But maybe you are now thinking, why should I write React in Reason? And we've already mentioned that Reason is compatible with React's core principles more than JavaScript. And why? Why is it compatible? Because React was developed for Reason. More specifically, React was developed for OCaml because first prototype of React was built in standard ML that's cousin of OCaml and then it was moved to OCaml and also React was transcribed to JavaScript for wider adoption. <coughs> and it worked. Now React is one of the most popular frameworks in JavaScript realm. However, we have a problem because when React came into JavaScript, we need to adjust JavaScript to React's needs. That's why we created a lot of tools and, uh, and uh, libraries to make our development smoother. As a result, our applications are more, more complex. If we take your typical React application, you will have at least these dependencies. You have, for example, immutable.js for immutability, you have a flow for static typing, you have a router for routing, you have an ESLint for linting, Premiere for code formatting, and Ramda or Lodash for some helper functions. Now, what if we swap React for Reason React? Do we still need all these dependencies? Immutability, <coughs> in Reason we have immutability out of the box. Static typing, in Reason we have a built-in type system. Router, we have a router built inside Reason React library. Linter, we don't need linter because we have a powerful reasons compiler that provides us with readable warning and error messages, similar to Elm. A uh, prettier code formatter, again, we don't need it. We have a built-in code formatter in Reason, just as in Elm, similarly. And helper functions, also, we don't need them because we, we have enough of these functions in, in Reason itself. So if you write React in Reason, you won't need these and many other dependencies. And why? Because Reason is based on OCaml. It's a language 20, 20 years old. All of its principles and rules how to structure your code in a place and stable. So you can think of Reason React as a safer way to write your React components. And moreover, you don't need to deal with all those JavaScript legacy issues because it's a different language. And I'd like to end this part of my talk by citing the creator of React and the creator of Reason, Jordan Walk. Reason is the best way to take React to the next level. 
And now we will take a look at some code. We will take a look at the tic-tac-toe <coughs> game I built in Reason React. So uh, it's a typical tic-tac-toe game. We have, a, uh, we have a board three by three and two players are playing cross and circle till one of them win and one of them lose. <coughs> so let's take a look at the app structure. This is typical React component structure. We have these components. We have an app top level which renders game component, which is the smartest component. It takes care for all the logic. Then game renders board, and board is composed of rows, and rows is composed of individual squares. Now let's get started talking about components in Reason React. In React, we can distinguish between stateless and stateful components. And we can do the same things in re same thing in Reason. So let's get started with stateless component. And we'll take a look at the top level app component. So in Reason React, we define our component that we call Reason React stateless component method, and we pass the name of, of the component as a string. So we created a stateless component called app and we stored it as component identifier. So this component, it's not a function and it's not a class. It's a, it's so-called a record. And record, you can think of it as an object in JavaScript. The difference is that records are immutable. So this is our component and it does nothing. So we need to add some properties to it. And we do that inside the make function. And you can think of make function as a function that returns our component. So it takes some props, properties. We don't have any props here. We have only the default, default one called children. And we are not using it. That's why we are writing underscore. So we don't need to think about that. And because its component is a record and it's immutable, we need to use the spread operator. Basically means that we are spreading it and we add a new properties to it. And because this is simple component, we add only the render method. And as you can see, render method again takes a single argument called self, but again, we are not using it because it's a simple component. So we write that underscore, and it returns JS6, which is what we use in React. So it's basically we have capitalized components, such as games, which are their components, and those uncapitalized, they are dumb elements. So our component returns the game component and the title tic-tac-toe. So really stateless components are simple. They only take, take props and return JS6. No, no complicated logic. Now let's take a look at the reducer component. And the reducer component is a stateful component that contains our state. And if you heard about Redux, it's based on the same principles. You basically have Redux principles which are handling the local state of your component. So if you want to update the state of your component, you need to fire an action that is sketched by reducer, and reducer will update your state, as we will see. So we will take a look at the game component. And game component, again, we need to define it. We call this time reason we have that reducer component. So we have a record again our main function that will again return our new component and because this component is complex we want to add not only render property but also initial state and reducer because it's stateful component so initial state just returns our initial state in our case it's a, again record properties then we have a reducer which is basically waiting for action to be fired so if the restart or click square action is fired Reducer will do some uh, uh, logic, as we will see. And then we have a render method, as before. It, again, takes a single argument, but this time we are destructuring it. We are basically <coughs> taking two properties, two properties, state and set from it. And state allows us to access state in the render method, and send, it's like dispatch from Redux. You want to send your action to the reducer. You want to dispatch your action to the reducer. And it renders, again, JS6, it renders board component. And what we are doing inside the board component is that we are passing on a mark prop down to the board component. And as you can see inside of it, we are calling send with click square. So that means that click square is action, and by sending, we are firing that action. 
but this method is passed to the board. So we are basically passing it down. As you can see, we are waiting for ID. So just imagine it goes from this component to board, then from board to board row, and from board row to square. And now this, uh, and then the players play the game, and they click <coughs> some field or square, and this action will be fired. So we go back to board row, back to board, and back to game. And here, this action is fired. We get an ID of the, of the, of the field that was clicked on. And reduce, reducer will see that action was fired. And it will fire the logic, the click square logic. So let's take a look here. There's some logic that will just uh, update the board. And finally, we call the reason react that update, and this method updates the state of our component. So, and it's pretty useful because this method updates our state in a pure way. It's not mutating our state; it just returns a new version of the state. And it's pretty useful because you cannot make any side effects here. You just need to do pure state update. But sometimes, when you want to update your state, you want to do side effects, and in that case you need to use different method. For example, let's say we would like to update our state but also print something to the console. Well, in that case, we need to, for example, we can use reason react that update with side effects. And we purely first update our state as before and then we print click to the, to the console. <coughs> so, why am I telling you this? This is really powerful because we have this clear separation between side effects and a pure state update in the word user component. Because if we if we take for example React, where you use Redux, so in Redux it doesn't handle this separation. That's why when you use side effects in Redux applications, you need to use middleware. So you need to use Promise middleware, Redux Tongue, or 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 Redux Saga just to handle these side effects. That means another complexity for your application because these things are very complex. Well, you don't need these things in Reason React because Reason React have this separation built inside of it. So again, <coughs> less complexity. And when you compare it to Redux, it's less boilerplate. You don't need that complicated configuration of Redux. You don't need those action and reducer files because everything is encapsulated inside your component. One last thing, in React you want to write reusable components. But when you connect your component to the, to the global state, the reusability of your component decreases because your component is dependent on that particular structure of your global state. And again, you don't have this problem in Reason React because, because Redux handles only the local state of your component. So this means you still have the reusability of your component and composability of your local state. Now, let's talk about type system. It's another really important feature of reason. Because reason is technically type language. That means it evaluates the type of your values during compilation time. In other words, you don't need to run your code to see if your types are correct. And it's great because you have a safer and clearer code. And Reason's type system is built in. That's why it's superior to what you get from Flow or TypeScript because it requires much less maintenance and you can rely on it on 100%. And that means no runtime exceptions in production. However, strong type system doesn't mean you need to write your types all the time. If you want to write your types manually, Reason will figure them out for you. It will infer them. Let's take a look at the simple example. Here we have a function. By the way, it's a valid JavaScript and the Reason syntax as well. And we are just adding A and B together. Now, if you run this in Reason, compiler will do this. It sees the plus and it infers that you are dealing with integers. And it's really cool because you have this type safety for free and you don't need to write any boilerplate and syntax. So it's really useful. Now, let's, let's, let's come back to our app. In our application, we have a two players, cross and circle. So we will define type player, which is either cross or circle. And this is called variant type. 
it's simply E now. It's like in the Merkle set of values. That means that player type is cross or circle, nothing else. It's not a string, it's not a list, it's not an integer, it's cross or circle. And these two are so-called constructors. And constructors are pretty cool because we can pass arguments to them. So let's define another type called field. Because we know we have our squares and each square is empty or it's marked by a player. So we can define field type. And as you can see what we are doing here, we are passing the player type we just defined to the marked constructor. We are basically using our constructors as data structures. And this is again pretty useful because you can build these more complex types and you make your code more readable because you, you don't need to repeat yourself, you just use it like this. And finally, the last uh, part, the last type is game state, which is based on the same principle. We were playing, winner, or we can have a draw. And we will use these types just in a minute. Now, if you use a reasons type system, you will also get a great developer experience because your favorite editor will provide you with various hints and auto completion features. For example, here, we have a function to value which takes field, type of field, and if you hover over it, you can see that it's telling us that field is, field is empty or marked. So it's pretty useful. Again, it means smoother development for you. <coughs> okay, let's talk about pattern matching. This is, again, a really powerful feature of Reason, and I will show you why. It is way how we process data in Reason. We basically have our data, and we define patterns, and we match patterns against our data. We will take a look uh, at an example. We are in still inside our game component. We are still in the play square reducer, and there's logic that updates <coughs> our, our board. So what it does, it just takes a board, which is a nested list, so we iterate through board, we get row, iterate through row, we get to the individual fields, and then we find the clicked field using the ID, and then we do the pattern matching using switch. <coughs> but first, just a reminder, we have these two types we define, field and game state, they are enough. So let's take a look at the pattern matching itself. When we doing pattern matching in reason, we use switch expression, and then we define our data. Now, these data, they are, they are in so-called tuple, and a tuple, it, it is another reason's data structure. It's basically data separated by commas. So this, this tuple contains game state, <coughs> type of game state, and value type of field. So we have our data, and now we can define our patterns. So first one, we want to check if we are playing in the game state, and if the field is marked. This simply means that if the user clicks already marked field. And in that case, we don't want to override field. We want to return the original value. So in this case, we just, we just keep the original value. If this is not matched, we go here. Uh, and just a reminder, those underscores means that we don't care about the data. We don't care about which player is playing or which player marked the field. We just, we just need the information that field is marked. If it's marked, we want to keep the value. Here, we, we check if we are playing and we want to know the player and if the field is empty. This means situation that you have a board and you have an empty field and a player clicks. And in that case, we want, to, we want to have our field to be marked by a player who is just playing. And if this is not matched, we want to go to the so-called catch-all pattern which will, will always have a match. So in, in, if those two are not matched, we want to keep our, our field empty. So why it is so cool? So we need to keep in mind that pattern matching can return only a single type. And in our case, it will return only the field type. So this basically means that we can get only marked or empty, nothing else. So basically this makes state that should never happen impossible to exist. This cannot return string or, or integer or list or anything. You have this insurance that this will always return the same type. If it won't, compiler will tell you you have a mistake. Another great safety you have using pattern matching is this. 
if we comment out the last pattern, now our pattern matching is not exhaustive. It means we are not covering all the possible cases. And in that case, Reason's compiler give us warning. It's telling us that our pattern matching is not exhaustive. It's telling us that we might have an error. And if you don't have this warning, you are sure that your pattern matching will always work. You won't have any error. And this is really useful, for example, when you are refactoring. Let's say you change something somewhere in your application. And for example, in JavaScript, you will be forced to go through all the code and check if something, if something's maybe is broken or something. But in reason, you don't need that because because compiler will tell you that your pattern matching is not exhaustive anymore. So again, it will help you to to improve your development. Now let's take a look at the more complex example of pattern matching. Now, the idea is still the same. We have data and we match them against patterns. This time we are just determining the state of our application. Now, if you just think about this, how would you write this in JavaScript? I mean, it's a little bit complicated. There will be probably a lot of ifs, maybe nested ifs. Let's, let's just compile it this tool through BuckleScript to JavaScript. Now, if you take a look, we have a switch statement. <coughs> I mean, it's pretty difficult to read. If you want to understand, you need to spend some time reading it. And that's the problem, because you don't have any insurance here. You don't have insurance that this will return the same type. You have no idea if this returns string, integer, array. You just don't know. And you have no safety that this is exhausted. No one will tell you if you are covering all the cases. It's just too difficult. So if you take a look at this code, you can see this is functional programming. This is imperative, sorry, this is declarative code. You are telling compiler, match data against patterns and give me a result. I don't care why, just do that. And here, it's, it's imperative code. You are telling compiler, try this. If not this, try this. If not this, try this. You're basically just saying, telling compiler how to do something. It's unnecessarily complicated and you don't have any safety. Okay, let's recap. Why should you use React in Reason? Because Reason is compatible with React's core principles more than JavaScript. We have a strong type system which is superior to Flow or TypeScript and you have no runtime exceptions, you can rely on it. It's really great. We have a pattern matching, a nice declarative way to process our data and we have these safeties this type safety, we have this compiler safety that this is, it is always exhaustive, it's covering all the data. We have built in a functional programming features. We have immutability out of the box. We have currying, partial application. Everything we need to write some nice declarative code. In Reason React, we have a great separation between stateless and stateful components. We don't need to think about classes or functions. We just think state or not state. And moreover, if we talk about reducer, stateful components, we have this clear separation between side effects on one hand and pure state update on the other. Now, if you've been programming in a JavaScript, it will be easier for you to get into reason because of the syntax similarities. Moreover, if you've been programming in React, it will, it will be even easier for you because you can use Reason React and you have all the knowledge of React principles in your head so you can basically start building stuff and learn Reason as you develop. Now, but to really appreciate this, okay, this syntax on top of OCaml, you need to get your hands dirty. And for example, you can check sketch.sh, which is basically a Reason playground where you can write the Reason code and you don't need to configure anything. And that's all from me. So if you have any questions, criticism, whatever, you can reach me through my Twitter or through my blog. Or you can ask me any questions right now. Thank you.